Uh, this is a, uh, a discussion for uh, our providers on how to understand the body's uh, carbohydrate metabolism. Okay, and, and this is an important lecture as it relates to diabetes, relates to lipid profile, and it relates to how uh, we can maintain our weight. Our body uh, primarily uses carbohydrates as uh, immediate fuel. Uh, energy and the carbohydrates are generally divided into complex, which is like the vegetables. They're called complex because they break down to sugar relatively slowly compared to refined carbohydrates and starches uh, such as potato noodles, uh, spaghetti, uh, bread, refined bread uh, that tend to break down very quickly into sugar. Now, uh, this is the preferred way of energy delivery as far as the body is concerned. It is fast, it's immediate, and that's why when you uh, <clears throat> have low blood sugar, you want to take a, a sugar pill uh, to give you the in instant uh, glucose. Now, the body, however, does not have a long store of carbohydrates. The carbohydrates in our body last usually a max of between six to eight hours, after which the body will have to draw down energy from another source, primarily protein and fat. So if you constantly be, are feeding your body with carbohydrates and you're going to have a constant uh, sugar load coming in, if you don't, then it's gonna, the body switches. In fact, 80% of the body's day-to-day -day energy is fed by fat is not fed by carbohydrates, okay? So with that understanding, let us uh, pursue a little bit more. Now, so let's say now you, 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 you take your uh, bread and you take your sugar load, you take your donuts, and about six hours, eight hours later, you don't eat. Well, what happens? And this is what happens in the low carbohydrate uh, diet, is that your body will kind of switch to fat. And so where does the fat come from? The fat is stored in your peripheral tissue, such as your muscles. It's also stored in your organs, such as the liver. And the liver is uh, one of the primary storage of fat in the form uh, of triglyceride. When you take carbohydrates into your blood uh, from your regular meal, the first thing that happens is that your blood sugar spikes up. And excess sugar is then pushed into the liver and stored in the form of a triglyceride. Of course, this is mediated by insulin, okay? So uh, when you eat something, the blood sugar goes up, the insulin from the pancreas goes up, the insulin reaches the bloodstream, it pushes the sugar into the cells and also moves the sugar that is excess that's in the bloodstream that's not going to the cells into the liver for, liver for storage. So uh, when you are now uh, are fast and you more than six hours has passed, what happens? That the body then turns to the liver and start to take the triglyceride from the liver and then convert it back into sugar so that the sugar can go into the bloodstream and helps out. So that's number one. So the, so the, the, the fatty acids uh, is broken down from, uh, from the triglycerides and enter uh, the, the tissue. At the same time, uh, your body's primary concern is uh, fuel to the brain. So the body at the liver level will also break down the triglyceride into, uh, first of all, acetyl-CoA, and then which enters the mitochondria and then becomes uh, HMG-CoA. And at this uh, particular compound is then uh, bifurcates. Uh, on one hand, it kind of is uh, converted into ketones, and ketones are important because the ketones can cross the blood-brain barrier into our brain and provide our brain uh, the necessary uh, energy source. And so that is very, very critical because as far as the body is concerned, brain is number one. Now, in addition to ketone production, and this ketone you can detect in the urine, uh, uh, and then the body enters what we call a ketosis. If you are on a low carbohydrate and the body is starving of carbohydrates, the body will go into ketosis as the ketones are being made to produce energy. At the same time, the body also produces more cholesterol. Cholesterol is produced at the same time 
as the ketones. So your cholesterol level will rise. So if you do a blood cholesterol measuring the LDLC level, uh, the cholesterol, the number will go up. Okay, so uh, when this happens, uh, why is this uh, happening? Is because the body wants to needs to make these LDL particles in order to contain the cholesterol and then have it excreted from the liver along with the triglycerides to go to the peripheral tissues, because all and water uh, don't mix. And that the aqueous solution of the blood does not mix with fat. So in order for this to happen, the delivery to the cells, the body has to make these particles of lipoproteins. And they are fed on the outside with a coating of protein. That's why it's called lipoprotein. And inside it contains, VL, uh, it contains uh, cholesterol as well as triglyceride. And these uh, LDL particles, at each step along the way, they unload the cholesterol and then they become uh, from one size, a bigger size, uh, to be a smaller size, okay? And as they become a smaller size, they become uh, more dense. They become H uh, HDL. So you go from uh, VLDL to IDL to HDL, okay? So that's the progression. Now, so if you measure a a LDL or you measure total cholesterol, and if you are on a low-carb diet, now, the general people uh, need about two to three hundred, I would not say need it, they take about two to three hundred milligrams of, uh, 200, 200, 300 um, grams of um, carbohydrates uh, a day, okay? Uh, low carb diet is usually about you know, 30 uh, to 40 grams of uh, carbohydrates a day, uh, a, a meal, I'm sorry. Uh, so, that is what we're talking about. We're not talking about the kind of extreme low uh, diet of you know, 20 to 30 or 40 uh, per day, okay? So the co important concept uh, to know is that as you reduce the uh, reliance on carbohydrates for fuel, you're going to rely more on the fat from the liver. So your cholesterol is going to go up, your ketones going to go up, your LDL is going to go up. But the LDL is not universally bad because there's a good LDL and there's a not so good LDL. As the LDL is made uh, by the liver, it's usually quite large. It's called uh, fluffy or large particle LDL. They are large because they contain cholesterol and uh, they float and uh, they uh, are cardiac neutral meaning uh, they, if you have a high count of good uh, fluffy LDL, you don't have cardiovascular risk increase. However, as the LDL becomes more small or more dense, they become, quote, uh, the bad LDL, in which case in a smaller particle, they can penetrate the, any fissures or cracks in the endothelial wall of the blood vessel, leading to uh, atherosclerosis uh, uh, triggering, okay? So just looking at the LDL itself uh, doesn't tell the whole story. You have to look at the particle and the prevalence of these particles. So uh, going one step further is important. So most people on low-carb diet, what happens is that their triglyceride uh, goes down, their total cholesterol goes down, their uh, HDL goes up, uh, and they lose weight. Most of them have an A1C in a hemoglobin as well as fasting blood sugar goes down because you're not eating as much carbs. Uh, and so uh, this is wonderful. The only thing is the LDL will go up. And a lot of people are somewhat uh, concerned uh, and don't know what is really going on. So, uh, so what we now know is that the total cholesterol, remember, is equal to HDL plus LDL plus the bracket triglyceride divided by five, close bracket. So if your triglyceride is lower, your total cholesterol is going to go down. Your, if your HDL goes up, your, cholesterol, your total cholesterol is going to go up. If your LDL goes up, then the total cholesterol is going to go up. So it's not uncommon to find that all the markers, weight, blood pressure, uh, triglyceride, uh, HDL, uh, 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 all improve with the exception of LDL. 
So the lesson is here is uh, do not be overly concerned. A lot of people in this category actually have very healthy uh, LDL provided that their large particle LDL are uh, sufficient and a good ratio. So it's important to get uh, the, L, uh, the LDL large particle and small particle count as part of your regular workup in order to give your body a clear understanding of what your cardiac risk is. Remember, the large particle LDL are, are cardiac neutral. It's only the small particle size of the LDL uh, that's, uh, uh, that's um, problematic because they are oxidized. Uh, LDL. So that's what we need to uh, 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 focus our attention. Now, uh, with regards to uh, uh, lipoprotein A, the, that's the LP with a small uh, letter A, uh, that is a, a, a oxidized uh, lipoprotein that carries a little tag of protein along with it. That's why it's called lipoprotein A. Uh, this is very similar uh, in terms of uh, clinical significance uh, to the oxidized uh, L, uh, oxidized uh, LDL. So you know it, because it's not commonly done, uh, it is uh, you can look at LPA as like an advanced marker of oxidized LDL. Uh, remember we said you know when you have a collagen or endothelial wall that is broken or have fissures from stress from excessive sugar. Uh, from excessive worrying, then the small particles tend to invade the endothelial more. So oxidized LDL becomes more problematic, the small particle one. LPA is an advanced uh, version uh, of that. Uh, we used to think that LDA is genetic, it still is a genetic marker, uh, but it does vary, it uh, depends on time of the day as well as time uh, of your stress. So it's not constant. Uh, to reduce uh, L LPA, you need a, a vitamin C, uh, B5, uh, which is a, um, a pantothene and pantothenic acid, and of course cholesterol. Why? It's because uh, the, these three items uh, make collagen in the body. The collagen in the body, the infrastructure is cholesterol plus vitamin C uh, and the pantothene. Okay? So why is it important? So let's go back. So to, to reduce LPA, you need to, uh, number one, reduce uh, oxidized LDL uh, formation, okay? And uh, because we know that oxidized LDL formation has a tendency to invade uh, the endothelial wall and cause uh, and trigger atherosclerosis events. So if you don't have the fissures in the endothelial wall or the cracks from stress or excessive sugar, then there's no reason for the body to make oxidized LDL or LPA. Uh, it's a kind of a close cousin, so to say. Uh, so therefore, you want to have a body mix collagen. Well, how do you make collagen? Uh, collagen is made in the body by a combination of uh, vitamin C, lysine, which is an amino acid, and proline. So if you do these three things together, uh, you know your body will make collagen. Over time, okay, it will take about nine months to actually do it right. Uh, and then uh, during this period of time, uh, as the collagen wall of the endothelium, uh, the endothelial wall, which is made of collagen, it repairs, it smoothens out. There's no cracks or fissures, and there's no room for the LPA uh, to deposit. And so you want to take vitamin C, uh, proline, uh, lysine uh, for that. Okay, uh, but coming back to the bigger picture is that you can see now how low-carb diet, if you combine it with intermittent fasting, where you are eating two meals a day, usually about 11 o'clock and 6 p.m. So from 6 p.m. to 11 a.m., you really have this fasting and you're pushing, you're pushing the body into a ketosis state. But it's not a true ketosis diet uh, uh, because, you know, a ketogenic diet uh, is, has to have very high fat, sometimes up to 80%. So the, most people that you hear about a ketogenic diet are a modified uh, ketogenic diet, meaning it is, it's uh, low in carbohydrates. Uh, it is uh, moderately uh, high in protein, and it's also moderately high in uh, fat. Okay, uh, we do know that saturated fat is associated with the fluffy uh, type of uh, LDL, the cardiac neutral ones, while the fat uh, that is generated from sugar uh, generates more of the low particle size 
LDL, which is the bad LDL. So if you look at the LDL alone number without knowing whether it's large or small, you will be confused. So people say, well, saturated fat is not so good, it's not necessary. So comparatively speaking, you're better off with saturated fat uh, versus uh, carbohydrates uh, as a generation of LDL particles. Of course, you need a balance in life. No, nothing, nothing is uh, perfect. So the lesson learned is that, yes, when you go on low-carbohydrate diet, you're going to have a rise in LDL. All the markers are improved. If you combine intermittent fasting, provided your weight is okay, you know, you don't get nausea, you don't get uh, other feelings, your body will tell you. You know, you can lose weight up to a certain degree and the body will go into a catabolic state and you will have no immune, you get sick uh, uh, quite frequently. So ketogenic diet in the pure form, you know, really low, low uh, carbs, you know, 30, 40 mil, uh, grams of carbs a day is very hard to sustain and most people fail. In fact, more than 90%. So most of us uh, have a, to be sustained, will need to go on to a modified ketogenic diet where it's low carb, moderate protein, and moderate fat. But the key is to reduce refined carbs, focus on the complex carbs, and, and reduce the noodles and spaghettis and things like that. But I expect the LDL to go up. And if you are not sure whether the LDL is good or not, then get the LDL uh, particle size uh, to further examine. And you should be uh, quite comfortable. And of course, this is all, uh, this, and your provider uh, will be able to analyze and explain this to you. Okay?